Greetings. Today I'm going to talk about how you can update your single sign-on authentication certificate with Google as an identity partner. So to do this, of course, we are logged into Jamf Pro because this is the certificate we are going to update. Now all the magic happens in the metadata file. This certificate is confusing to update. I definitely bumbled through it. So hopefully when I'm watching this four years, 11 months from now, because this certificate expires in five years, I can just improve my workflow. And if you mess up your workflow and need some support because the documentation is not so great, hopefully this will help move you along. Okay, so let's just break down exactly what this is. SSO is single sign-on authentication. Core concept here is you're logging into your Jamf Pro server with your the same credentials you use to log into like your company email account, right? And in this case, that's housed in Google. A lot of people may use Microsoft, which would be Azure, and I'm not gonna go into those workflows today. So if that's you, this might not be for you. How do you know your certificate's gonna expire? Well, you're gonna get a notification up there and it will say, SSO cert expiring in 30 days and then every day it will count down from there until it expires. So first things first, you're going to go to your system settings, single sign on. That's the page we're on here. You're going to click edit. And this is where you're going to delete and re-upload your metadata file. Um, other things to talk about, you have a failover URL and it's going to be up there. Uh, it's not going to be the same as mine. So keep that in mind. It's going to be different. The other thing you want to do is uh, click the allow users to bypass single sign-on authentication. What this does is it'll allow you and your other admin users to sign on without SSO. So if you mess up the process, you can still get in. Uh, and even if that box is checked, if you're using that failover URL at the time of this recording, that will work. So make sure that failover URL is in your password manager and uh, lock down so you can access it. In the future, Jamf might eliminate uh, this failover URL workflow to where from a generic URL convention, which you can kind of see here, to a uh, failover URL that's specific to your JSS. And that's where you see that regeneration button there. So after this, of course, I'll regenerate my URL and update my password manager. So that's this, and, and that's all done for security purposes, right? You don't want people um, trying to backdoor into your server with that failover URL. Okay, back to the metadata piece. In this case, that's gonna have to be updated on our Google admin console. And the magic happens uh, in the security directory, SSO with, with SAML applications. And here we can see our certificates. Now the concept here, the way this works is you can have two certificates. And the idea is you have one that's active and then when that's about to expire, you create a new one, test it out. Um, once it's working, you delete your old one. And if it's not working, you can always revert to the old one. So that's best practice. And because we're not using our second certificate, I can just delete it and re-add one so we can further illustrate that concept. So that's what we're doing here. Now, I know you see a download metadata button here and you can download metadata. However, we wanna actually do that from a different location because if we download metadata from here, it's only gonna download metadata from the uh, first certificate in our sequence. And you may be pointed at the second certificate. So whichever one you're actively using, you wanna use. So over here in this page, um, we're in apps, web apps and mobile, and we are at our Jamf Pro app. And so here we can see our URL configuration, our sign response, and where we can choose a certificate. Now, right now there's only one here now because we just deleted and added a new one. So if we go to manage certificates, we can see that there's two at this point. And if we exit out of this, we'll be able to choose between one of those two. We're gonna keep it pointed at the old one, which is the April 29th one, not the April 30th one. 
uh, if we were to change this and save it out, it'd break the configuration. So over here, once you generate the new cert, point the configuration to the new cert, download your metadata from here, and then you'll have your XML file, which we'll go ahead and show in Finder. And then we'll left click this and open it in our text editor of choice. What I'm looking for here is in row one and it's the date of creation. So making sure that matches uh, the cert we have created because they have different dates. So making sure that looks good. That checks out, we have April 29th, 2028, which matches what we have over here. And I may rename this file, similar to the one we have below, with a version number if I'm testing out a few of these, and a date of upload. So that's how that works. Now we can close this out and go back to Jamf, which we have open in Safari. Here we click on trash can to delete our existing file and then upload our new one. I'm actually not going to show that. It's pretty basic. Uh, and if I did it, it could break my config because um, we have a, because that would be a different cert, uh, certificate than what's actually being used right now. Okay, so once you do do that upload process though, you go back to your um, Google Drive, click that test uh, login, and it should bring you to the login for Jamp Pro because I'm already SSO'd in. It, it automatically just logs in, but you would need to log in with your company email account. Okay, other things to check, system settings, we can go to our server logs, and this is great for troubleshooting. So if you're running into problems, uh, assuming you're not completely locked out, you've been able to use your failover URL to get in, you're gonna wanna uh, read these logs and troubleshoot. You may even wanna enable debug log our debug mode there and then let it run for a little bit uh, try uploading metadata try signing in try getting it to work download the log and send that to you uh, jamp support now we can see a lot going on in this log I just switched it to cobalt so it's easier to see um, and we can see that page not found error. So the one thing I'll note in this log is that when you save the configuration and it is working, it does take some time to propagate from your cloud identity partner, which in this case is Google, to the Jamf software server. Uh, I When I worked with support on this, they let me know, hey, I've actually seen the same thing on Azure. So you may have a working configuration and it may just take five, 10 minutes to start working so that's um just fun to know all right let's end this by recapping our core workflow so system settings single sign-on authentication once again this is for single sign-on authentication to your server you have a failover url just in case your configuration is broken that must be in your password manager for it to work and you update the certificate by updating the metadata you want to allow users to bypass single sign-on when you're working on this that's very important so edit click that box and save and then the signing certificate information is not that relevant to updating the metadata or making this whole thing work it's something you generate on the jamf side at least when you're using the uh, google admin console as your uh, cloud identity partner of choice. In any case, that's all I got from you today. Let me know if you have questions or comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. We will see you around.